Got this in the mail today from Oak Ridge, Tennessee. This is a disk source of cesium-137, one micro curie of it, and I'm going to use it to calibrate my garter counter. You can see that I've taken it out of the box and the Geiger tube is fully exposed, there are no obstructions. And by calibrate, I just mean um, find the conversion factor that relates the counter minute, which is like the raw reading of the Geiger counter, into dose units in microsieverts per hour. Right now, I'm just using 175 counter minute per microsievert per hour. That's just something I found online. Um, but it does vary. I've seen um, factors as low as 120 to as high as 200. So I just want to find out what it is for cesium-137. Now if I bring it close to the tube uh, with the sticker side down, you'll notice that it picks up a lot of activity. And then when I flip it around, it just goes crazy. It's a huge amount of activity going on and what looks like what's happening is the sticker side is actually blocking all most if not all of the beta particles and then the bottom side is letting it through so cesium-137 is a beta and gamma emitter and it looks like the sticker side has a harder acrylic to it which is blocking most of the betas and then the bottom side it's probably made of some kind of softer plastic, or maybe the sample is mounted closer to the bottom surface. I don't know. But yeah, um, we're only going to be using the gamma emissions from it to calibrate the Geiger tube anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so the basic idea behind calibrating a Geiger counter is that we take a source and we calculate theoretically using formulas what the effective dose should be at some distance and then we place the Geiger tube at that distance and then measure the counts per minute that it gives us. So then we have an easy way to relate the counts per minute to the expected dose rate at that distance. That's basically what I'm going to do. Um, now Geiger counters are calibrated using gamma radiation only. Um, that's just the standard practice in the industry and there are a few reasons why beta is not used. Um, the dose absorbed from beta radiation just has too many external factors that we can't really account for when calibrating, like the kind of clothes you're wearing, or whether your skin is wet or dry, or the temperature or humidity of the air, because gamma uh, beta particles do get attenuated even by a few feet of air. Um, they don't really penetrate that far. So to accurately measure the dose from beta um, radiation, you need something like either a proportional counter or an ion chamber with like a surface that emulates human tissue or something, which Geiger counters don't do. So Geiger counters can only sort of estimate and indicate that there's beta radiation, but they can only be calibrated to gamma um, to actually to accurately report the dose being absorbed from gamma. Now to calculate the expected dose rate from our sample, uh, we need to know a few things. First is the activity of our sample, um, in which in our case it's one microcurie. Uh, one microcurie means 37,000 decades per second. Um, that includes all the decays, it includes the beta and the gamma. Um, our gamma decay happens at an energy level of 662 kilo electron volts. That's the energy carried by the photons. That's the characteristic gamma energy of cesium-137. Um, we'd also need to know the photon yield, um, which basically just means the fraction of the total decay events that the gamma photons occupy. And then we'd also need to know things like the mass energy absorption coefficient, of the air and a few factors. So instead of doing all those calculations manually, I found that using an online calculator, like 
the rad pro calculator would be a lot easier so that's just what I'm gonna do um, it lets you put in um, your isotope and distance and it even lets you add shielding uh, if you want so I use a distance of 14 centimeters and found that the expected dose rate at that distance from this sample should be um, 0.144 microsieverts per hour. Now to measure the count for a minute, I actually designed this calibration jig and 3D printed it. Uh, it lets me place the Geiger tube like so, and then the sample goes in here. And this is probably overkill, but it just lets me keep things consistent. Like it maintains a precise distance and keeps things level. Um, so at first, I'm just going to measure the natural background with um, no sources in the room. So I have a baseline. Um, I'm going to do it. I'm going to just measure the total number of counts for 10 minutes instead of just taking um, the counts per minute number because there is some variation. Um, and taking the average over 10 minutes is going to be a lot more accurate. Um, so I'll just start it now and then come back 10 minutes later. So it's been just over 10 minutes and the reading at the 10 minute mark was 218 total counts. Um, I'm back with the sample now and I'm going to place it in the holder. And then I know that the beta, at least most of the betas are already blocked by the sticker side. But just for good measure, I'm going to use this spare circuit board that I made for the Geiger counter as a shield. I do have a slot here that the shield goes into. This is just to make sure that no, almost no betas can make it through and I'm just reading the gammas. So I'm gonna reset this again and then run it for 10 minutes and then see what the readings will be. So at the end of 10 minutes, I was reading 454 total counts. So here's our results. Um, we had a background um, count of 218 in 10 minutes, which gives us 21.8 counts per minute on average. With the sample at 14 centimeters from the tube, we got 454 counts in the same 10 minutes. Um, subtracting the background, we get 236 additional counts, which means 23.6 counts per minute coming from our isotope um, on average. Our expected dose rate at that distance was 0.144 microsieverts per hour, um, which means that our conversion factor of counts per minute per microsievert per hour is now 163.89 or about 164. And I'm just going to go into the settings and change that to 164. Oops. There we go. Now this is going to be saved into the EEPROM or the primary memory, so it's going to be there when I reset. It should be there. Yep. So that's our new conversion factor, and that's a calibrated Geiger tube. Um, let me know if you have any questions or comments. Thanks for watching.